What's up guys, RBG here hitting you guys up with more coverage on Marvel Spider-Man PS4. Since Game Informer has been covering this title, there has been a huge snowball effect in regards to information. A couple days ago, I gave a brief analysis about Spider-Man's suit and how Insomniac gave slight tweaks to the textures or whatnot. But it wasn't something I wanted to harp on too much because we usually see certain aesthetics change a little after a game's first reveal. But apparently, this suit may mean more than what we think and could prove to be a very important aspect to the game. And I think this is going to add a lot to the overall experience because basically every suit will play in their own type of style. Like in my previous analogy video, I failed to mention how suit crafting will be a key feature. Apparently, each individual costume worn by Spider-Man will have to be made in order to be fully utilized. Now, this is something that wowed the hell out of me because Spidey games really don't get that level of detail. We usually have to find some way to unlock things like this or completely finish the game. But during a Game Informer video podcast held by Leo Vader, Kyle Hilliard, and Andrew Rayner, they gave their overall impressions on the game and went into further details about the suits. Before elaborating on the suit, they talk about the game's opening act. During this moment, you'll find yourself going through a tutorial as you watch Peter Parker go through his daily routine, which ultimately transitions into him changing into Spider-Man. One thing that intrigued me was how they mentioned that the way certain action scenes are integrated puts you in the mind of a popular game like Uncharted 3. I can only imagine how immersive this act is and how the player will feel like they're watching a movie instead of a video game cutscene. Something that Spidey fans will appreciate about this opening is how Peter's messy apartment is littered with dozens of easter eggs. You'll hear an unspecified rock music kick in as you get an idea of what kind of tone Insomniac is going for with this version of the character. As Peter gets dressed, you'll notice he puts on these particular wristbands that look like nothing more than your standard armwear or stylus accessory. But these just don't happen to be part of his web shooters. If you go back and look at all the various scenes we see of him, you'll notice that he casually wears them around in public. Hearing this just gives you an idea of what Insomniac means when they say we're dealing with a more seasoned version of Spider-Man like we've never seen before, at least in video games. I think that's the general idea they're going for because throughout the years we've gotten Spider-Man titles that were excellent, but they could have been better. But Insomniac is trying to make sure this one turns out to be just as good as its predecessors with zero to little gray areas. But anyway, shortly after Spidey sets out, the game begins to run the player through Spider-Man's web controls. Now based on the footage and interviews from the developers, you see how the web swinging would dare to challenge us in different ways of execution. I mentioned before that we see that Insomniac is making it their mission to avoid throwing the player experience under the bus, and one of the things we want to experience the most is swinging around New York in the most stylish ways possible. As an avid Spider-Man game enthusiast, I always wonder why Spidey is more of a badass in the cutscenes than he is in the actual gameplay. Like if he's able to move from building to building without anything halting his momentum other than his enemies, then why does he move so clumsily when we actually play with him? What the developers have done with the mechanics in this game is bring all those badass moments to life. And they've flat out gone on record and said that the web slinging is way more satisfying than Spider-Man 2's. That's pretty much where every Spidey fan sets the bar at for the most part. We want that level of speed that provokes us to swing around those streets of Manhattan. Until this day, there hasn't really been a game like Spider-Man 2 that features elements like this. That is, until now. Spider-Man PS4 fixes these issues by making the elements of physics a top priority. During instances such as running on walls and performing parkour along rooftops, button prompts appear along various objects and ledges. To whip around a corner, the player simply presses circle and when you want to be propelled forward, you can press X. What's cool about all of this is that each object will cause Spidey to perform a different animation allowing for more free flow movement. That's a major issue I think most of us have had with previous entries is how easily your momentum can be stifled by simply running into a building or AC unit hanging out of windows. Stuff like that always trigger me. If you want to present good web swinging mechanics, I think it's only mandatory that you make sure gravity and other physical properties remain in check. Like actually make sure the physics remain grounded and believable. One of the guys in the Game Informer podcast mentioned that there is no slowing down in Spider-Man PS4's web swinging. And he says that the game is firing off of calculations like you wouldn't believe, which is apparent in all of the footage we've gotten. Like each movement and pose is purposeful and the transitions are motivated by the action at hand. So say for instance Spidey just so happens to attach his web to a street light, he will perform a web zip to help increase his speed. Performing all of these different actions will motivate players to form their own combinations similar to what you would do in a Tony Hawk Pro Skater title. I can tell that artistic inspirations were taken from the comic illustrations in the movies. Another thing mentioned during the podcast was how each building in the city bears their own unique architecture. 
In most cases, we've seen games where developers half-ass their designs and make buildings from simple rectangles like covering them up with textures. But in this title, the city has its own heart and features open world interactivity with civilians where you could choose to interrupt a basketball game by snatching the ball with your web, or you can choose to swing into rooftop parties if you wanted. Now this is the big zinger that got a lot of people, but I think it's safe to confirm that the web rush from the Amazing Spider-Man will be making its return. I kinda assumed this based on the E3 footage we got last year because of all the button prompts you see on the different objects and ledges. In the Amazing Spider-Man games, the web rush allowed you to slow down time on the fly to aid in helping you choose what move you wanted to make. With the simple press of a button, the web rush would provide a variety of not only navigational choices, but also combat options to assist you during your stealth missions. It was a pretty cool feature that made web swinging unique, especially with all the fancy animations, but it wasn't necessarily polished. It looks like this and many other gameplay elements will be utilized by Insomniac except with more refining. Similar to the web rush, the player will be able to slow down time for a brief moment by pressing L2. From there, you will be able to look around the area for available purchases that will be marked by circle or X. You can also perform a directional zip in case you want to get out of tight situations, but keep in mind that this is limited by some type of meter. I'm guessing this will be another component to your spider sense, but who knows. Anyways, I think we went over all there is to cover in regards to actual web slinging, so let's get back on topic about Spidey's suits. In my previous video, I mentioned that Spider-Man seemed to be wearing his classic suit during the exclusive coverage trailer. Now, there wasn't any info in regards to whether this would be an unlockable or play a part in the story mode, but on Monday, we got our answer. Apparently, Spider-Man will start off wearing his classic suit with the Black Spider logo. You will have quadruple the powers that you have in any other suit. Halfway through the game, Peter will gain his advanced suit we've seen throughout the promotions. You'll have to craft a suit at some point, and its design is more than just a visual way to separate Spider-Man's video game look from his past looks. The developers say that there's definitely a narrative reason for why he bears the white spider logo. Now, I previously mentioned that for whatever reason, Insomniac decided to change the texture patterns on the original suit design. For some unexplainable reason, the red parts of the suit now has horizontal lines going across it instead of the hexagons it featured during the reveal trailer. I forgot to mention that other than the red part, the blue part retains those hexagonal patterns. In one of the interviews, a developer stated that each part of the suit serves a specific purpose like how the blue part will allow for more flexibility, and the red part will serve as some kind of armor. There's no intel on what the white part such as the logo represents or how it will aid Spidey. Insomniac is staying tight-lipped on that particular concept, but what we do know is that it has something to do with Peter Parker's secret job. Now, my guess is that he's already an Avenger or Stark intern since he's in his 20s, because in most of the comics that's the case, so it sounds like something within that realm. But who knows? Anyways, crafting suits will be another key aspect that will factor into what Spidey wears. As a matter of fact, if you desire to wear any of the aforementioned costumes, you will have to find the materials to make your desired uniform. So for example, if you want to obtain the Noir Spider-Man outfit, you probably have to find the different pieces of leather. But whatever item you find won't just be limited to one suit. You can mix and match them to gain access to their special powers. I don't mean to get off subject, but is it me or does this game look like it's going to be on the same level of Grand Theft Auto? Everything seems to just have that grand scale for a Spider-Man game. When you have features such as this, it only adds to more replayability and the completion hours are going to double because we're going to get off track and just swing around and try to find small little trinkets or whatnot. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to make it their mission to get a platinum trophy on this. But anyways, Game Informer released an article that goes more in depth about the gadgets that will be available in Spider-Man's advanced suit. After analyzing the combat footage provided by Game Informer, it looks like each feature will be accessible via a weapons wheel or gadgets wheel that allows you to switch out on the fly. Not sure if it's just me, but this reminds me of the weapons wheel menu from Insomniac's earlier projects, Ratchet and Clank. I'm guessing it will play in the same vein where you press something like triangle and you choose from 8 different options. They mentioned that 3 gadgets were available with their time with the game and that they were all upgradable. The first gadget they described is one that we saw at last year's E3, which is the Tripwire or Trip Mine, as it says on the gadget wheel menu. In stealth scenarios, Spider-Man can place a tripwire on a wall and when an enemy walks by it, it shoots out a web to pull the enemy toward the wall and wraps him. In combat, you can use it as outline, or you can attach it to an enemy so that they can walk into another enemy. The two slam together. One interesting thing they mentioned about this particular gadget is how it plays as an important character facet of Spider-Man. For example, if you're in the midst of fighting countless thugs on a rooftop and you just so happen to accidentally knock one of them off, the tripwire will activate to attach the pummeling bad guy to the wall. 
That's something that plays well into the game because as we all know, Spider-Man don't kill. This feature will automatically happen but it won't deplete your supply so it's all good. The next gadget we have is the Web Bomb which is one of those moves that will aid you when you're completely outnumbered. Spidey tosses out this bomb and once it hits the ground, elevates and explodes, it sends out webbing in every direction to immobilize your enemies. Upgrading your web bombs will make the webs hold longer and I guess the explosion will be a lot bigger each time you level it up. And last but not least we got the spider drone we saw featured as a pre-order bonus. You can throw it up in the air and it will float above enemies firing out webs like a machine gun. It can also web enemies up or just be used as a distraction. So yeah. But anyways guys that's all the latest news I got for you today. What do you think about all this new information? Do you think it's on the same level of Grand Theft Auto or the Arkham series? Get at me in the comment section below. As always I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed this video it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media platforms with all your friends and followers. I love doing what I do and I do it all for you guys. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.